What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be installing a FlowPro 5 inch straight pipe exhaust on a 2013 Duramax. Here's the kit. Part number is 664NM, stands for no muffler. You can get them with a muffler as well. Uh, here's the truck, 2013 Duramax. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get at her. First thing I wanna say though, is that if this is illegal in your area, then just don't do it. Unless you just plan on using your truck off-road or on a track, just don't do it. You know, if it's against the law, there's some huge penalties and fines like that. This video is more for uh, the performance guys that just want to, you know, build a drag truck or run their truck off-road. So before you install an aftermarket exhaust, you uh, have to tune the truck. You have to use a programmer that is able to run without emissions. Uh, I'm just using a HNS XRT in this video. Uh, it's just a little cheaper. It's what the customer wanted to do. I also use EFI Live and Easy Link Tunes. They're all great options. Uh, but yeah, you just must uh, program the truck before you put the exhaust on or you're just gonna end up in limp mode. Once you tune the truck to run without emissions, you gotta unplug the throttle valve. So you pull this red tab back. And once you have the tab back, you can press it in there and pop it off. Unplug your throttle valve there. Uh, there's also this EGR plug back there. Same with the uh, same with the other plug. You just pull that yellow tab. If you can see it back there, pull that yellow tab back. Then you can press it, pull it off, and one more right here. Unplug this uh, those three plugs, and then we'll get on the exhaust. Okay. Once the truck is tuned and you have the EGR, the two plugs, and then your one throttle valve plug unplugged under the hood. We can go underneath and start unplugging all the sensors off of the exhaust. So starting at the front of the truck, there's the V-band clamp to your downpipe. We're just gonna go down here and look for plugs. So I think this is the first one. So unclip it from there and then just press down on that tab, pull it out. Sometimes I get a pick in there, they get dirt and rocks stuck in there. So sometimes they don't come apart easy. Uh, up there we have another uh, little electrical and then we have the deaf, the deaf uh, feed line, I guess. Uh, on that, you see that little square right there? There's one on each side. And you're just gonna grab them like this and pinch them together and then you can pop that guy off. So it's pretty easy. Keep going back down here. Look for more. There's another wire up here. Uh, that one's, I'm just turning around here. That one's probably going to be up on top. Uh, there's another guy up here. Um, where's the big one? Oh. We go back here. See this big cord here? That goes over to this guy. Uh, you're going to want to just pull this red tab out, unplug it here, and then you're going to use a 10 mil or whatever and unbolt this little module off and that's gonna come off with the truck. This wire here will stay on the truck, we'll zip tie it, but this uh, module is gonna come off with the exhaust. Uh, so yeah, another sensor up there. These lines, you can usually just twist and pull them. Yeah, just like this. So that's fine with those hoses. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So go ahead and just find any wires that are connected to your DPF and unplug them. So just what you do. I feel like that one just came right out. And you can push the tab, wiggle it off, grab a little impact or something. There, and then this is gonna come off with the exhaust. See if I can show you how to get these guys off. So this one's just easy, you press it, pop it off. And then yeah, this one, just push both sides like that. Okay, so just go over it. You should see all these kind of wires hanging down just check to make sure you got everything disconnected from the exhaust to the truck uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove this factory exhaust out so there's a couple ways of doing it um, I'm just gonna cut it because the guy's not reusing this so what I'm gonna do just to make things easier is right up over this is the rear axle I just like to kind of cut it right around there the back piece will come out easy and then this piece will drop down after so I usually cut it there with a sawzall and then 
Uh, I usually just cut it here too, or you can actually unbolt it. I might unbolt this one, we'll see. A lot of times those bolts strip or like the nuts strip or they're too rusty, they just snap. Um, yeah, but you got it separated here. And then if we go to the front, here's where it connects to your downpipe again. Uh, I like to cut it right back uh, kind of right here, just in front of that hanger a little bit. Uh, and then this downpipe, or this part that goes to your downpipe will just fall right out. And uh, then you can bring this cat up forward and down. Hopefully the camera's catching this, but yeah, then this piece will go there and you can pound it down. Um, that's how I take them out, because it's really quick and customer doesn't want to reuse it. So if you want to take this out in one piece, well, I guess two pieces, you'll have to disconnect it here and take it out of the hangers and drop the whole thing down and try to pull it enough that you might have to have the truck on a hoist or whatever just so you can lift it up high enough that you can drop this down and get that exhaust pipe over the axle. Uh, and then to get this front whole section out, you would have to take off this transmission cross member and then you can take it out in one piece. Okay, so I made my three cuts. That's the one uh, just in front of the rear axle. Moving up to the middle of the truck here. I just cut it with a sawzall right there and then uh, oh. Going to the front of the truck. I cut it right here just in front of this hanger So I'll start at the back of the truck. I have some free all just use some kind of lube or penetrating fluid, whatever Spray this hanger here Then we're gonna use a pry bar and we're gonna pry uh, the hanger out of the rubber and pull this tailpipe out. There, it's pretty much out of the hanger. I just kind of pry here, hold the exhaust with the other hand, and if you pry up like that, it uh, will pop off the hanger. Okay, I just pulled the tailpipe out of the back there. Now we'll move on to the next. Look at that stupid thing. Like, what does that even do? It starts twirling the air? I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna leave this cat in for right now. Uh, come to the front, and we're gonna take this uh, this piece that connects to your downpipe out. So again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna spray that. Uh, I just sprayed that uh, bolt there, the clamp with uh, penetrating fluid. Then you are gonna grab a 11 mil wrench or ratchet wrench, or I use a deep socket with a little stubby ratchet, and you're gonna loosen that clamp and. Then this uh, piece right here will come right out. You might have to pry the clamp off a bit with a pry bar, but we'll get to that once we loosen the clamp. Hopefully yours comes pretty easy. I've had these before where they're just so rusted and from getting hot and cold so many times that they're just seized. And uh, a lot of times they'll actually break and you'll have to get a new clamp. So just take your time with it. Use some heat if you have to and make sure you spray it with some uh, rust like penetrating fluid or free all something like that. Okay, clamp's pretty loose, so just like that, it just popped right out and down. And there it is, one more piece to go. Okay, so I'm gonna for, get this last piece out, your cat there. I'm gonna remove this bracket. Uh, so there's this bolt right here, and then there's one on the back side. So I'm gonna re release, I'm gonna remove this one first, and then we'll go to the back. And it's just a 13 mil, I just use a 13 mil uh, ratchet wrench on it. Okay, that bolts out. Now, this is gonna be kinda hard to show you, but at the back, right up there, there, I can kinda point to it there. We're gonna get that bolt out too. And again, a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench is definitely the best to get that guy out. You can kinda see the edge of my ratchet there. I'm just going like this. So you can get that guy out. See once, once it's out of the hanger there, you can just kind of wiggle this guy out and keep it though. We're gonna reinstall it when we put the new exhaust in. Okay, now this is my least favorite part. We're gonna push this and we're gonna slide it over there and you're gonna have this sticking down and uh, we're actually gonna have to beat it out of here because it's gonna catch on the transmission oil pan a little bit. So I just use a hammer and a couple good wax and it should just fall right out of here. I'll just put it in position first. I just kind of rotated it around in here and to get out of this death injector because to make your life easier, it's good to just pop this injector out. Just uh, two 13 millimeter nuts. 
There, now you have a little more room. If you kind of angle it right, and you get it up here in front, kind of pull it down. There, see I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to hit that with a hammer or nothing. It came out pretty good. Well, there it is, that's the factory exhaust. So just before we put the new exhaust in, I'm gonna actually remove the def tank out of this truck. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description to fast forward if you don't wanna remove your def tank, just to go to the install procedure. But uh, yeah, we're gonna quickly get this def tank out. It's not very hard. Okay, so we're back under the truck. The def tank is right here. Uh, if you wanna remove your def tank, this is the main electrical plug for it. So you're gonna squeeze these two tabs. See what I can do with one hand, but squeeze these two tabs and then pull that back. And as you pull this back, kind of pull it apart and uh, you should be able to separate this electrical. Okay, that electrical is unplugged. So that's all electrical for the def tank because it all runs through that one harness. Okay, now we're in the wheel well here on the passenger side. Again, the def tank is right there. Uh, these are your lines for your def tank. So that guy right there, I think is just a breather or something like that, I don't know. But uh, this big one and the smaller one right next to it, I'm just gonna cut them with a X-Acto knife. Just watch out, this is electrical, so you don't wanna cut into that. But uh, yeah, you can just cut them here, or if you really want, you can drop the def tank and then take them off the right way. But like I said, none of this is going back on the truck, so I'm just gonna slice those two hoses open. Okay, well, once those are both cut, we can remove the def tank. So what I'm gonna do first is uh, I actually just take the straps right out. So I think they're 13 millimeter. Uh, on the, some of the newer trucks, they're a Torx head, but uh, yeah, 13 millimeter. There's one and there's the other one. So just loosen those straps off. The bolt's right out. <sighs> Maybe put your knee under it or support it a little bit because it can drop sometimes, but usually it doesn't really drop when you just take these out. Now this uh, def tank cover here, there's three more 13 millimeter bolts. So be careful when you take these ones out because this is when it should kind of drop as you take these ones out. Once you have it down a little bit, we gotta take this cover off. So see, I'm kind of lifting it up just to get it off of these hooks, just like that. And there, look, it tank's still up there somehow, but get that out and uh, now we can get the tank down. So what I usually do, I support it with my knee like this, and then I just grab this strap and I kind of pull it so it bends. And once it bends, you can push it forward and uh, get it down just like that and just kind of bend the straps down. Do that on the other side as well. And take the tank down. like that. Now you can just unhook these guys out and throw them in the pile. Okay, so here's where the def tank used to sit. Now if you look up here, these are those hoses that were going to the def tank, uh, or the spouts. We're gonna take that spout right out on this truck. So there's just some zip ties here. If you can get in there and cut them just like that. See now these are loose from the firewall. Now we'll go up to the the spout and we'll unbolt it and we'll pull it out. So there's two 10 millimeter nuts, one right there and then uh, one on the other side of the spout. Uh, sometimes it's easier to take this intake elbow out, whatever you want to do. Uh, I usually just use a quarter inch ratchet and uh, get in there with some extensions and swivels. So I'm just gonna pull those two nuts off and then we'll pull it out. One more thing I forgot. See right back here, just gotta open up this clip here. Uh, to get that electrical off and then this thing will come out. There we 
Here we go. Another thing for the pile. Okay, they always come with instructions here. You can read them if you want. This at least just shows you uh, which pipes go where. Uh, and then yeah, like if you're, these pipes up here are just for if you have a long box or a crew cab, stuff like that, you have to put the extension pieces in. Okay, so the install procedure is the opposite of the uh, removal. We're gonna start the front this time. Uh, we'll put this guy in first. We'll put this hanger on, bolt it up, and then once the hanger is bolted up, then we'll do up the V-band clamp. Okay, so I got this pipe up, just kind of sitting here on the tranny cross member. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is get your, this old uh, clamp here, put it back in the same hole, the hole on the outside, and uh, put this hanger back on. And uh, once the hanger's on and bolted up, then we'll actually connect the V-band clamp up there. So you get your first bolt, you just start it on this one. Okay, now this one's hard. You kind of got to use your your fingertips, both hands, and you kind of got to use your knee to get the exhaust pipe in the right place, get the hanger lined up with that hole in there. And uh, yeah, get this one threaded in. And then once this is threaded in, you can tighten it with the ratchet wrench, then go to the front and tighten the other one. Okay, now you're going to line this up in there and you're going to pull that clamp off so it's uh, the V-band clamp is clamped around uh, the downpipe as well as this new piece we're putting on and kind of hold it, squeeze it together and uh, get up there and tighten that clamp. Just make sure that the clamp is seated properly. Don't quite tighten it all the way, just uh, get it a little snug but still enough that we can still kind of wiggle it in there a little bit if we have to. Okay, I got my clamp on. It's tight enough that it's not gonna fall out but I can still wiggle it around a little bit. Now we'll go down and put the next piece on. Here's the next piece that's going on. Okay, I got this piece in. Go back here to the hanger. You want the hanger to be basically directly underneath uh, the frame hanger. And you want this to be nice and parallel. Uh, so you kind of have to twist the exhaust up. Now the exhaust, if I touch it right now, it's probably gonna fall back down and twist like that. So I'm gonna put that clamp up, uh, that, we, that joint we just slid together. I'm gonna put that clamp up and tighten it right now just so that this uh, won't move. This one's gonna be a four inch clamp. The rest will be five inch. So just make sure you find the four inch clamp. Okay, this clamp's on, it's tight. Uh, not moving anymore. So now we'll go ahead and put on some more pieces. These are the two small pieces you get with the kit. I believe this one is the one I gotta use. I think this is for the crew cab. And then this one is what you would use if you have a long box. So I'm gonna put this guy on and then also put this one that's beveled on both sides. This is the straight pipe piece. If you get the kit with a muffler, this will be your muffler. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put the axle piece on, uh, this one here that goes over the axle. And now we'll put the final tailpipe piece on. Whenever I'm doing a five inch exhaust, I usually take this uh, spare tire guard out just because it, it will hit. So there's just two 13 millimeter bolts, one there and then one behind here. This uh, guard will just come right down. Okay, the exhaust is all in, hanging where it needs to go. So now we'll just go to the front at that first five inch clamp. We won't do the V-band clamp yet, we'll do that at the very end. Uh, but yeah, we'll put all of our uh, exhaust clamps on. Now we can put this guy on. This is one of the last things. Just grab one of these uh, hangers that you left and we'll put this guy on, put the U-bolt in and uh, yeah, just one extra hanger never never hurts. Once this is done, we'll go to the front and we'll just finish tightening the V-band clamp. Now I'm just gonna quickly go around and just zip tie any wires out of the way that are hanging out. Make sure that none of the wires are gonna touch the exhaust to zip tie them all out of the way. Put the tip on if you're getting a tip. Okay. 
And that's it. Fire it up and check for exhaust leaks. Well, that's it for my video on installing a five inch Flow Pro exhaust on a LML Duramax. Uh, if you're doing a four inch exhaust or delete pipes, like the process is gonna be pretty much the same. You should be able to figure it out. Uh, but yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Shoot me a message if you got questions or ask in the comments. And yeah, check out the next video if you wanna see what this thing sounds like. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.